Rich Molodet Moran, Gilad Majid, Merry Christmas to all of you. Dear brother and sister, allow me first, on behalf of all of you, to greet and congratulate our beloved patriarch, Moran Mor Ignatius Ephraim II, all my brothers, the archbishop, uh, the members of our Holy Synod of Antioch. I would love to congratulate uh, my dear brother in Christ, Abuna Andrew, your pastor. And today also we have Abuna Joseph with us. So on behalf of all of you, I would love to congratulate all of them. Of course, I would love to say Merry Christmas to all the organizations of uh, our wonderful Church of the Virgin Mary. May the Lord Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary protect all of you now, always, and forever. And again, Eid of Rijo, Merry Christmas to all of you. Dearly beloved, while many of us both give and receive gifts, during the Christmas season, God gave us a gift we will never be able to repay. In exchange for our sins and shame, God offered us eternal salvation by sending his Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, to earth as our savior. All we can do in return is to accept this remarkable gift and pursue a relationship with the greatest gift giver of all. As we prepare to spend Christmas with our friends and family, I encourage you to share not only gift, but also, please, I encourage you to share the good news of salvation with everyone around you. Today, I'm going in brief to try to answer two questions about Christmas. The first one, how should we celebrate Christmas? And the second, why we celebrate Christmas? So how should we celebrate Christmas? The key to Christmas, my dearly beloved, is to remember what it is supposed to celebrate. And I'm sure you know it all. We are supposed to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. If it weren't for Christ, there would be no Christmas. And the key to keeping Christ at the center of our Christmas is to keep our eyes on him and not let ourselves be distracted by everything else that is going on. I know, my dear brothers and sisters, that is easier said than done. Christmas has grown increasingly busy and secular, and Christ easily gets crowded out by all the activities and the stress on material things. But as we celebrate Christmas today, let us take time to turn our attention to Christ. Let us go to church, as you are doing. May the Lord bless you as a family. And take time also to read one of the Bible's accounts of Christ's birth, perhaps around the dinner table. Most of all, stop, reflect, 
on why Jesus' birth is so important? Is it simply because he was a great man or was he more than that? The Bible, and the Bible is the source of our belief, the Bible says he was God in human flesh. Think about it. 2,000 years ago, God came down from heaven and became a little baby. If we go together to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 14, we read, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. But, as you know, he didn't stay an infant. He went to the cross so we could become part of his family forever. But why <clears throat> we celebrate Christmas? As you know, <clears throat> at Christmas, we celebrate the birthday of Jesus. But who is Jesus? Again, we have to go to the Bible. The Bible tells us Jesus is the Son of God who came down from heaven to give us the greatest gift any person can ever receive, the gift of eternal life. We know also that we, we are separated from God because of our sins. But Jesus came to take away our sins and make us part of God's family forever. The Bible says in Romans 6:23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This Christmas, I'm sure, your kid, your son, will receive when you go home under the Christmas tree, you will find a lot of uh, presents. So I'm sure your kid, your son, will receive many gifts from you. You will do everything possible to give your gift to your son. Choosing your gift. Paying for them. Wrapping them and offering your gifts to your son. But they won't really be his. I'm talking here about the gift. They won't really be his until he takes them. Takes the gift and make them his own. The same is true with Jesus Christ. God, exactly like you, the parents, God has done everything possible to give us the gift of salvation. But we must accept it by reaching out and inviting him our Lord and God Jesus Christ, to come into our lives. So, my dearly beloved, let us accept God's Christmas gift. Let us turn to Jesus asking him to come into our lives. You know it better than me. He is always ready. He is always waiting Till we open the door of our heart and he will come and he will enter and he will certainly dine with all of us. So please accept God's Christmas gift. Let us turn to Jesus asking him to come into our lives and please 
don't be selfish. Encourage everybody else to do so as well. Allow me, dear friends, again to congratulate all of you on this holy occasion of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was talking to you about uh, giving gifts. And as you know, we received a very precious gift during Christmas. God himself took our flesh and became man to pay for our sins. And this is what we have to do at Christmas time. It is very important to think about everybody else. It is very important to really live the spirit of Christmas to think about the needy, those who, who does, don't have anything to eat. And here I would love to thank you for you what you have been doing since last year. By the way, we have been doing great, but it is always not enough. Please keep trying to be living in the Christmas spirit and please always be thinking about everybody else, especially about our fellow Suryoye who live in our homeland. And as you know, and especially during Christmas, they have nothing to celebrate, but they have their faith. May the Lord bless all of you and give you eternal life. And again, Merry Christmas to all of you. Milad Majid, Brich Mawlodeid Morandi.